एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स in part 1 of this lecture we have covered the potential energy surfaces and how to calculate the coordinates on which the potential energy depends how uh, we have the degrees of freedom and how to plot a three dimensional diagram a three dimensional figure regarding the potential energy as well as coordinates of the nuclei system uh, in this part we will take this forward to h3 type of a system we will draw its potential energy surface and various trajectories which happen in the uh, formation of the bond also we will cover when one atom is replaced by another atom then what happens to the potential energy surface Hello students I am Dr Upasana to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by S Chand Publishing the link of the ebook is given in the description box so this is not a complicated diagram it is basically a three dimensional picture where this particular axis is your potential energy axis so just imagine that it is a three dimensional cube and in the three dimensional cube the surface okay if we are in the room the uh, floor is your xy coordinate and the height is your potential energy so xy coordinates are the bond distances r b c that is you have h a h b and h c so these are your three atoms in uh, consideration and r b c it is the distance between these two atom r a b is the distance between a and b uh so in the mass potential energy diagram see if you if you just take this slice of your cube if you just focus on this slice you will see that it is a mass potential energy diagram if i have b and c in consideration and if i cover this and if i move here this is again a mass potential energy diagram between a and b so what is happening is uh when a and b approach a and b approach one another so you can say that you have atom one atom here and c is approaching towards b from here a is approaching uh, towards b from here and as the distance is decreasing the potential energy of the system is also varying now what is happening when all these three are taken into consideration the potential this is no more this is no more a simple mass potential so it is a kind of a uh, you know if you imagine this on a three dimensional surface this is kind of a hollow saddle which is created when the three are moving towards one another it is not a pure uh, cube okay it is not a cube of only the mass potentials mass potential which are joined together it is basically something is happening here so uh, what we have done is now we have removed this highlighted portion okay this blue and green portion and we have just made this this portion we have made uh, you know this this portion this particular portion only here now see uh, again you have these two axes and this is your potential energy if you look at this uh, this is a kind of three dimensional form where the potential energy it is you know you are unable to see the uh, hole or you know you are unable to see the saddle which comes in between this uh, diagram that particular saddle is represented like this here so what is happening is uh, this is a kind of a hill you when you uh, go top at the top of the hill and then you come back at the uh, minima that particular saddle point is represented this is your this particular point is that saddle point so uh, if it is uh, you know i think it is clear let's now understand what is a contour diagram contour maps or contour diagram 
if I have a solid cube and if I cut it in between, the area is called cross sectional area. Similarly, if I have a three dimensional picture and if I cut it and take that particular slice only, thus that slice is my contour diagram. So, we have represented the two three dimensional diagram into two dimensional picture. But what are these lines? What are these lines? These lines represent my potential energy as the system, okay? As uh, you know, these are the axes R A R B C and R A B are the uh, internuclear distances, and when the atoms approach one another, this is how the potential energy of the system changes. So, uh, in the earlier slide, we had this point uh, as the origin and you have uh, this particular axis as RAB and this is as RBC. So, how we have made this contour diagram is we have rotated the uh, this picture okay and then flipped it so your this point comes in this your uh, origin point is this so what we have how contour maps are made this 3d di 3d picture is rotated is flipped in such a manner that this point comes at the right upper rightmost corner okay this RAB is now this RAB, RBC is this, right? So, this point comes here and if I take the cross section, if I take this particular slice, if I take this, this slice of the cross section, then the contour map is like this. The potential energy variation of the entire system is this. If I move a little lower in the potential energy surface, again I if I cut this slice and draw the same on the contour map, then again you will have something, something of this sort as the potential energy. As we keep on cutting or taking the slice of this three dimensional structure, we are getting the contour maps of the potential energy, how the potential energy is changing at all the points when you are changing the RBC and RAB. So, these are the lowest point from the Morse potential where the bond formation takes place. So, I can say that this is my equilibrium bond length and this is the equilibrium bond length for this is for BC and this is for AB. So, what happens is here you have minima in the potential energy diagram. So, those points are represented like this in the potential energy in the contour mapping. So, uh, so this is the important feature that how from the three dimension structure we are making the contour maps where again you have three parameters to look at but we are studying it on a two dimensional paper. So yes, so I hope you have understood how these lines are made from that 3D diagram. <clears throat> what is important here in the uh, contour diagram is that again this is also represented as RBC this is represented as RAB. So, this particular RE is represented as equilibrium or bond length of bond length of B and C and this point is bond length and this point is bond length of RAB. So, you see According to the potential energy diagram, you have a very low contour or, or the minima here uh, in the potential energy when the bond formation is taking place. This also rep represents that it is a minima when the bond formation takes place and in between there are three atoms which are approaching one another and uh, 
in the next slide we will study what a saddle point is and how you know you can uh, see all these variations so now let us see three cases of three atoms approaching one another and how the potential energy changes so let us say if the bond length of bc is kept constant what does this mean that hb and hc are at almost equilibrium bond length which is this one so your this bond length is fixed almost and then a is approaching this particular system so when a is approaching this system what is happening is uh, a is approaching let's say from a higher distance first okay distance is large and then this this distance decreases as it approaches but the distance between hb and hc are almost are same then again the distance between ha and bc decreases and ultimately what happens is so in the potential energy diagram this is almost remaining fixed the potential energy almost remains fixed and after that it increases and it after that once h a and h b bond distance uh h a and h b bond length is equal to the bond distance between a and b what happens is or in other words when it reaches this point which is nothing but the equilibrium bond length of a b then the potential energy suddenly rises up so then hc is removed from the system and you have a bond formation between ha and hb so this is how the potential energy is moving another case could be there can be n number of cases where uh, the three atoms approach one another this is the case we have considered specifically when two atoms were uh, in close proximity with one another and third approaches this system the second probability could be that when a approaches b and c then while it is approaching the bond between b and c slightly start loosening up it increases increases and the bond formation takes place between a and b so the second case is when uh, the second case is when you have ha approaching hb and hc but what happens is the bond between bond length between b and c also increases so you can see that it is a type of the represented by a blue line in the curve that you are, you are not at the fixed bond length it is increases increasing 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 and this is how potential energy goes from this point to this to this and then it is increasing and it reaches this particular case where the bond formation takes place so in the second case b and c internuclear distance also is increasing the third case is the case where the potential energy reaches a saddle point the saddle point so let us see the case number c in this case both the distance between a and b and b and c changes or in almost similar fashion the h a and h b and h c the distances between ha and hb and hc are almost moving in a same fashion so what happens is it crosses through a point which is the minima in the uh, hill or it is called the saddle point and that saddle point is nothing but the transition state in the potential energy diagram so a transition state is a point where these two are almost equal the bond lengths between ha and hb are almost same and then suddenly what happens is the bond between b and c uh, a and b is formed and b and c breaks out so these are the three cases we have covered uh, there can be n number of cases as you know i can make line from any point any point but these are the three which we have 
uh, covered. Now, after studying H3 system, there can be another system where one fluorine atom. Now, what is you know important here is that fluorine is electronegative. It has more number of electrons. So the potential energy diagram, how does it look like? Uh, here again, we have three atoms, but in HAHB type, okay, okay, this is a bond where uh, two hydrogen atoms are already bonded together. Now, when fluorine approaches this system in a collinear fashion, then the possibility is that HF bond takes the uh, HF molecule forms and H atom dissociates or it moves away from the system. So, how many bond lengths we have now? Two, two bond parameters which we have to consider the bond between H and H and the bond length between H and F. So, on one axis we have HH bond length, on another axis we have HF bond length and again this you know again is a contour diagram. So, what we can, so again this is nothing but a contour diagram of a uh, HF type of a system. In this contour diagram this is RH, so this also is RHH, this is RHF, right? So, this is a bond length of HF, this is the equilibrium bond length of HF type of a system and this is the equilibrium bond length of H2. So, see, you can see this is a, this is a potential energy contour map, this is and these are also contour maps, potential energy contour maps that we have made. So, this is a general idea of potential energy surfaces. The third type of system again is the system where all three atoms are different. Uh, this is called HCN type of a system where when H approaches CN, when H approaches CN, rather than N going away from C or you know if it is approaching like this rather than C going away from N what happens is a stable molecule HCN is formed. So in the previous two cases we have uh, made the potential energy surface where only the diatomic system of molecule forms and one atom leaves. But in HCN case, when these three atoms come into vicinity of one another, a stable HCN molecule forms. So in this case, the potential energy diagram has a circular kind of a diagram where initially it is, so if you have RCN and you have R and H and CN. So, a kind of circular type of a diagram uh, is made. So, in this part, we have covered the potential energy surfaces of H3 type of systems and we have learned how the trajectories are studied on the potential energy map. Then, we also focused on how if one atom is replaced uh, by let's say fluorine then how the potential energy uh, surface changes. To know more about this topic you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. The link of the ebook is given in the description box. If you found this video interesting please like share and subscribe the S. Chan Academy channel. Also press the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.